Greetings, folks. Today we're going to do a little simulation on an emitter bias and a voltage divider bias for our BJTs. We're going to start with a little emitter bias circuit here. And what we see is our transistor. I've got a 2N3904, negative 5 volt power supply, 15 on the collector, fairly standard resistor sizes here. And I've also connected a voltmeter across the collector emitter so we can directly read the collector emitter voltage. And here are the calculations, the standard calculations we would use. So here is the formula we would use for collector current. This is our exact equation. Plugging the values in here, 5 volts for the power supply. We're going to assume 0.7 for the base emitter drop. And then our RE. And for this 04 transistor, um, we're going to assume a beta of 150, which would be typical for this particular operation point. Um, you know, the precise value might be a little higher, might be a little lower, but 150 would be a good place to start. So we grind through there and we get uh, about 1.93 milliamps of current. And then using that current and our beta, we can figure out the base current, about 12.9 microamps. And then using that, we can determine the uh, base voltage. We see that's about uh, negative 46 millivolts, small negative voltage. Remember, the base current's coming in like this. And then the emitter voltage. We simply take that base voltage, subtract the assumed 0.7, and we get about negative 3 quarters of a volt. Now we can take the original current that we calculated, use Ohm's law to find the drop on the collector resistor, and that gives us about 9.66 volts, right? Subtract that from the power supply, and we'll get VC. In other words, the voltage from collector to ground. And we can see that's uh, about 5 and a third volts. And finally, if we take the difference between VC and VE, we'll get VCE, a little over 6 volts. All right. So let's do a, a little simulation here and do a DC analysis. And right off the bat, we'll check some voltages. All right, so we can see our collector voltage, 5.33, so that checks really nice. We've got a negative 42.7, which is pretty darn close to our VB. Because this is a little smaller, that would indicate that the current, the base current's a little smaller. So maybe our beta was a little bigger than 150. Maybe it's 170 or something like that, you know, 165, whatever it works out to. Um, as we continue along, the uh, emitter voltage, uh, 0.72 volts, negative, so that's pretty close. And, uh, you know, chances are here, the 0.7 that we assumed is probably a little bit off on this transistor model. It's probably about 0.68 or so, so that would compensate. And finally, our collector emitter voltage we can see is a um, smidge over 6, which is what we're seeing here. And if we... Um, and just click on here to check the current. There's our 1.933, so that checks out perfectly. And our base current, 11.87 mics instead of 12.89. So in fact, our assumption of the beta, this 150 is probably a little bit low. You know, like I said, it's probably maybe 165 or you know something um, in that range. All right. So that works out really well as far as the uh, simulation giving us uh, the same values as our um, calculations, right? You can never know exactly up front without measuring it what the beta is for the transistor or a precise value of VBE. Those things do depend on um, that specific transistor and exactly where it's, where it's operating. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to take this basically the same circuit and I'm going to make a, a voltage divider bias out of it. So I got a 5 here, a negative 5, and a 15, so that's a 20-volt differential. So I'm going to make a 20-volt differential right, with a single power supply. I'm going to keep the RC and the RE at 5 and 2.2K. And because this is a 5-volt differential basically going up to the base, I'm going to set a voltage divider to give me about 5 volts on the base. And I'll try to make a Thevenin resistance that's you know, pretty close to this 3 and change. And here's our circuit, right? So there's the 2.2, the 5, there's our total 20 volt supply. And I've set up a 12 and a 4, right, which is a 3 to 1 divider on the 20 volts. So that'll give me the 5 volts on the base. Okay. Um, 
we can see some values here that are computed. And in fact, if we run through our calculations, right, here's our thevenin voltage, 5 volts. There's our uh, 3K thevenin. Here's our exact equation. Stuff the numbers in here, and we get 1.937 mils. Let me just run up here and get our... Um, uh, little dialog box here so we can hit some things. All right, 1.937, 1.937. Looking pretty good, right? Uh, the voltage across that resistor you can see is uh, 9.68 or so. Um, if we come down here and do the calculations, right, 9.68, everything's working out pretty good. Um, we, you know, we take that current, this is how we can find the, um, the VE value, right? basic Ohm's law calculation here. Um, in this case, because I'm using the, the exact form, I realize that the base voltage isn't exactly 5 volts. It's going to be a little bit off. So the easy way to do this is to calculate your current, figure out the drop on the emitter resistor, and then just go back up 0.7 to get your base voltage. Right, so that's what I did here. Take the current times the 2.2 Ohm's law. You get about 4 and a quarter volts across this. Go up 0.7. And there's your base voltage, right? 4.96, 4.96. This is all checking out really nice. All right, collector voltage 10.32, collector voltage on the SIM 10.32 if you round it off. VCE 6.06, 6.03. Again, we don't know exactly what the beta is. You know, it's probably again closer to 165. The VBE isn't going to be precisely 0.7. Um, and those little variations will come in. If we chose a different transistor, we'd probably get slightly different values. But this does verify the values that um, we generate from these equations. So these are nice, accurate equations. They work well, and that's really what we want, something that is predictable. There you have it.